I'm a novelist and a creative writing tutor. Buy my books. I'll be signing books at 3.30 in the book tent. And I'm going to share some hints today for aspiring novelists. Are there any here? That's a bit depressing. I'm going to share them anyway. People think that good dialogue in a novel is realistic, like real speech, but it isn't. Good dialogue is convincing. It convinces the reader that it's realistic. Dialogue on the page isn't like real speech, because if you were to maybe go to a coffee bar and record yourselves talking amongst your friends and then try to write a transcript of it afterwards, you'd soon find that it was full of fragments and repetitions and interruptions, and if you just stuck that into your novel, it simply wouldn't work. So I'm going to give you five hints on how to avoid writing crap dialogue. First of all, use the word said. But said is dead. This is what my students say to me, because they were taught it at primary school. Don't use said. Branch out, expand your vocabulary. And if you go on the internet, you'll find there are whole lists ready-made for you. And here are the G words. Grasped, oh sorry, gasped, growled, grumbled, grunted, guessed, gurgled and gushed. In my view, said is not dead. Please use said, she said. Because said fades into the background. It's like the paint on art gallery walls. You want people to look at the Mona Lisa, not at your fancy wallpaper. And so you want your, character, your reader to focus on what the characters are saying and not to get distracted by your amazing and exciting vocabulary, your wow words, those of you who are teachers and have had to pass that on to your little ones. So my advice is to use said most of the time, and so that when you do use a synonym for said, it will have much more impact. Point number two, avoid adverbs. An adverb, as you know, is a word that describes a doing word. She explained patronizingly. <laughs> and if you've done your job well as a writer, you shouldn't really need to explain to your reader how the character just said something. I hate you, get out of my house, yelled Janet angrily. Well, she wouldn't have been hinting, would she? <laughs> Darling, you look gorgeous tonight in the moonlight, he murmured romantically. <laughs> so ration yourselves, so that when you do drop in that one rare and perfectly chosen adverb, it will really earn its place on the page. Point number three, don't be boring. Now that probably sounds obvious, but I've marked rather a lot of waffly dialogue in my time, and it's often riddled with cliches. So don't use off-the-shelf descriptions, and please don't ask your reader to wade through dreary long conversations about whether your characters want tea or coffee. Be ruthless. Cut, cut, and cut again. Ask yourself, what is this bit of dialogue actually doing in my book? Does it reveal character? Does it impart crucial information? Does it help set the scene or advance the plot? And if the answer is, well, no, not really, then I suggest you delete it, unless it's very funny. Because dialogue can be used to great comic effect, but less is more. So ask yourself, as a rule of thumb, how much of this can I lose, rather than how much can I hang on to? But what should you cut out of dialogue? I suggest that you try cutting out any gestures and actions that clutter it up and slow the pace. I'm going to read an example now of how to do it properly. Not by me. I think many of you will recognize the author. Jeeves, I called. Sir, said Jeeves, manifesting himself. Jeeves, a remarkably rummy thing has happened. Mr. Glossop has been here, and he tells me that it's all off between him and Miss Bollinger. Yes, sir. You don't seem surprised. No, sir, I confess I had anticipated some such eventuality. So there we are. 
Jeeves and Worcester. And the stage directions are kept to an absolute minimum, you will have noticed, but we still know who's talking. Um, and there's only just that one very apt phrase, said Jeeves manifesting himself. And I'm inclined to pinch that, it's so good. But it's very easy to um, clutter up P.G. Woodhouse's brilliant prose by piling in lots of redundant cliches. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Golden sunlight streamed peacefully through the ancient window, giving the room in my ancestral home a quiet and peaceful air. Jeeves, I called out loud in an audible voice so that he would hear me and enter the room. Sir, uttered Jeeves, my butler, addressing me formally in polite tones and coming into the room where I was. Jeeves, I muttered, brushing an imaginary speck of dust from my immaculate dinner jacket sleeve. A remarkably rummy thing has just happened. Mr. Glossop has been here. He tells me that it's all off between him and Miss Bellinger. I explained to him in a calm voice that had a telltale tremor in it, owing to my inner disquiet, which surged in my stomach like a wave on a restless sea. <laughs> yes, sir, he affirmed, nodding his head wisely in agreement and smoothing his hair in a practiced gesture whilst looking at me with a steady glance of his piercing emerald green eyes. <laughs> and so on. Don't do it. Think twice about using dialogue to get information across. Don't parade uh, your, your research. Here's an example. Call me old-fashioned, but I prefer a longbow to a crossbow, William said, although the crossbow was really the first handheld weapon that could be used by an untrained soldier to injure or kill a knight in plate armour. The most powerful crossbows can penetrate armour and kill at 200 yards. Agreed, said Cedric. But they are much less efficient because the draw length and the laugh is so much shorter. Finally, root your dialogue in strong characterization. The only way to do this is by living with your imaginary friends for days and months and years. So daydream, imagine in imaginary conversations. But if you do this on a train, people might think you're a dangerous lunatic. But that's fine, it's a bit like wearing a dog collar. You'll get a seat all to yourself. And do I keep all these rules faithfully myself? Of course not, she snorted contemptuously. Thank you very much.